Now we're going to be chatting about uh, Show Me Shorts, uh, a fantastic uh, uh, festival which happens every year in this country and it's the 17th edition and they've got some cracking uh, new things to tell us about and on the line right now, Gina Delabaca, the festival director. Uh, hey there, Gina. How are you doing? Kia ora, Liam. I'm great. How, how are you? Thanks for having me. Kia ora. Hey, thank you so much. It's funny, you know, I'm used to having a producer and I just went to hit the keyboard and then realised we're being produced from Wellington today, so you're already on the line, which is fantastic. And and thanks for doing this at, uh, at short notice. So, can you talk us through some of the highlights for this year, please? Yeah, absolutely. So, firstly, Show Me Shorts and all my team and I are just delighted to be screening in cinemas again this year after the last couple of years of craziness. Um, all the poor cinemas have been suffering, not, a, not able to screen things or having to um, uh, only have half an audience. So it's just a real pleasure to be able to bring a collection of short films from all across New Zealand and all around the world to people in cinemas. Um, yes, we mustn't forget the last that. Of- You're right. You're right. We mustn't yeah. forget that. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's just a real privilege to be able to do it, and so we're really grateful for that. Um, Over the last couple of years, Show Me Shorts has also um, uh, gotten with the times, and um, we have a few of our programs are available on demand through our on-demand platform as well. So um, uh, we're, I guess, a a sort of a hybrid festival now, although we're very much still cinema first. So, um, yeah, screenings in cinemas, but there'll be some programs available for people to watch in the comfort of their own homes as well. Um, yeah, that's that's great, so, um, actually. That's a cool offering. Yeah, I think it's nice for people to have the choice. Um, so this year we've got um, 92 short films and music videos from um, 27 countries all around the world, and there's going to be seven short films that are making their world premiere during the festival, which um, kicks off... Uh, it runs in uh, 36 venues around the country from the 7th to the 30th of October. So it's just a um, touring program all across New Zealand. The main program that's going to be screening everywhere is the sampler. And um, I know you guys have a big audience in Arrowtown um, or, or the Queenstown yes. kind of area. So mm. Dorothy Brown's down there is screening our sampler collection on the 23rd of October. Uh, we've also got some screenings um, over the road in Dunedin um, uh, at the Rialto Cinema there. And also the yes. Dunedin Libraries are screening a collection of Fano friendly films. Um, so if people are keen to take their kids along, um, nice. it is um, during the, the end of the school holidays. So it's kind of a fun activity to do with your kids, something cultural. Um, mm. And short films are really a great thing to do with children. Um, uh, you know, the, sh- the shorter runtime um, appeals yeah. to them. And uh, it's a great way to kind of introduce them to the magic of cinema from a, a young age, get them hooked on cinema going um, while they're young. That's right. Yeah, I think I think that's true. And, like, it's the concentration span. I mean, some adults are bad with that these days too, but... Definitely children, and they get tired, so it's, it's, it's kind of cool. They can have all that wonder and enjoyment and inspiration from, from seeing it, but um, not be worn out and, and go away with great memories. Yeah, and it's fun to watch them as adults with your children as well, I think. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? I think so. And the other question so I, I had for you is like, yeah. Yes. I was going to say that... Um, I was going to mention where one of the short films in the program... Okay, go for your life. <laughs> so um, we've got a film called Shark, which is an Australian film made by the um, uh, um, stunt director turned filmmaker Nash Edgerton. And uh, it stars Rose Byrne as um, a woman whose husband likes to play pranks on her. And um, the film's part of a trilogy of short films that are available on our on-demand platform. Um, So this is just one in a a series. Uh, And they're all around this guy who plays um, pranks that go wrong um, on his girlfriend. So they're really fun. And uh, because he's a stunt artist, 
they're quite like physical comedy um, and the, the films are called Spider, Bear and Shark so you can use your imagination to kind of um, think about what kind of pranks involving those animals could go wrong. Yeah, I can imagine. I think that so- I think that sounds really fun, actually, and it almost kind of sounds like a bit flight of the Concords in a way. Yeah, it's that kind of humour. Yeah, that sounds brilliant. I've got to ask you about King Tupac. The New Zealand film sounds oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so um, that's one of the films that's been going to be making its. Um, world premiere as part of the festival and we're just um, really delighted to be able to um, to bring these kinds of collections to New Zealand. So that film um, is about um, the the Kumara um, and ah, okay. it, it is, Go on. Um, it is um, a film um, about how the criminal was brought to New Zealand from South America, and it's kind of a doc- an animated documentary that tells the tale, um, kind of based on myth and legend. And it's a really fun watch. Um, there's a few mythological type of films in the program, but um, from the Pacific region, and I think they really illustrate how um, Pacific um, region filmmakers, we have this strong kind of oratory tradition in our storytelling that really plays into short films very well. And um, right. uh, this is one of the short films that's a great example of that. It's like beautifully vibrant images. Um, that um, It's just a real fun watch. Mm. I see that you've got uh, Jennifer Teatamera Ward Leyland uh, with with a, a, a film Disrupt. I'm intrigued by this. Yeah, that's her new film, um, and um, it's definitely goes into some dark subject matter, um, which is an interesting one um, for her. It's her directing debut, so it's pretty exciting. Um, for us to be able to screen that film and for filmmakers um, it's I mean it's rare for her to go behind the camera normally we see her Mm. acting on screen Um, yes so it's it's going to be interesting for people I think to come out and check out that film that plays in the um, Aotearoa woven section of the program so that one's online and anyone can see that all the on on demand collections are available from the 15th to the 30th of October so people have a couple of weeks to check out those films Fantastic. I'm impressed that you're covering something like is it 36 cinemas nationwide? Yeah, um, we started from small beginnings when the festival first started um, back in 2006 and we've really just added two or three new cinemas every year since then and it's been quite organic growth, mostly from cinemas contacting us wanting to be part of the circuit, so it's yes. super nice mm-hmm. that they're, I mean, they, oh, often that's just from people asking their local cinema, hey, we've heard of Show Me Shorts, we'd like to bring it to our town and um, mm. some of the smaller locations are some of our biggest now, um, we generally have screenings in Stewart Island over the summer and um it seems like everyone on the island comes out to um, to see all of the films. Yeah, um, wonderful. So, yeah. Yeah, it, I, th- I think it's a nice thing for people to do as a community. It's great you go that far south. Yeah, we actually go further than Stewart Island because we have a screening on, on Scott Base in Antarctica. So um, the, all the scientists down there can see the short films as well. I thought that was a typo. I was going to say that. It says here Antarctica, and I'm going, eh? <laughs> That's amazing. I know. Technically, it's part of New Zealand, so we thought we'd, um, we'd try and cover that as well. I think I think that's sensational and and so good for the for the people at Scott Base as well. But you know I love it. I'm just going to talk about some of the towns of Potiki, which is not far from where I come from. You know, Otaki, uh, Tarkika, a bit of out of the way place, really. Uh, wonderful that mm-hmm. you know these these areas have lock, uh, Katy Katy, uh, Arrowtown, of course you mentioned, which is which is great for me. I've got to ask you though, what 
how short can a short film actually be? Yeah, it's a good question. There's no real international standard when it comes to short films. Um, but we, we find that um, for our programming purposes for New Zealand audiences, we have a rule that the films are between 2 and 20 minutes long. I think anything longer feels a bit mm. weird alongside some of the shorter films. The ones in our program probably average about 8 to 12 minutes long um, mostly. Um, mm. Yeah, so when, pe- when people come along, they get to see about eight short films in one collection and we group them thematically around um, different interesting themes so that pe- um, the films sort of take you a little bit on an emotional journey through thinking about one subject or another. Mm, mm. And it's incredible the number of different countries that are represented this year. I'm just looking at uh, all the different places. I mean... Um, Colombia, for goodness sakes, uh, Iran, uh, fascinate, Luxembourg, Kenya, mm. you've done amazingly well. Tunisia, I mean, for, for us here to have this opportunity to see, you know, m- films from such far off places, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's a, a good bit of armchair travel for all of us who've been stuck at home for the last couple of years. It's a nice way of um, getting a little insight into... Um, you know, the culture world. from other countries. Yeah. Mm, I think so. I have to, seeing as I'm a bit of a music and a punk fan, I see there's an American uh, short film called Punk It Tender. What do, what do you know about that? <laughs> That's a good, fun short film. It's actually um, about a little boy who's being bullied at school and he's got a stepdad. And unlike your normal story that would be about a stepdad who's evil, his stepdad is actually... Um, a quite a fun punk, um, and um, nice. he tries yeah. to t- tries to teach his stepson um, how to handle the bullies. But actually, he's a bit hopeless at it too. So it's kind of a, <laughs> a fun, f- it's a fun um, story in the um, in the fun o friendly two section. So it's available on demand for people to watch. And uh, yeah, it's just a bit of fun that touches on the subject of bullying and. Um, Mm. And, and it makes, makes it a bit of fun of a punk. Yeah, it makes fun of pul- punk culture and um, um, reminisces about that kind of eighties trend, which it seems to be getting a bit of a revival these days. I reckon, um, rightly so. Mm. It's, it's quite a fun, um, it's quite a fun um, epoch to kind of re-examine. I reckon. Yeah, I, I believe so. I've been kind of pushing that a bit lately on the, on the radio, just because. It, it is interesting, and it was just and just how much fire in the bellies of the of the people involved in that early scene, and what the lengths they were prepared to go to, and and how they really thought that, you know, they could change change the world and change society, and there were, it it what it sort of did in a way for a while, didn't it? Oh, absolutely! That kind of um, real energy of the punk movement is probably something that we could all do with a bit more of now. Um, you know. W- the environmental movement could do with a little bit of that as we um, think about global warming and how we can all kind of join together as a community to try and make some positive change in that area. Mm. Yeah, some sort of to sort of give it a shot in the arm, and yeah, that's actually that's actually quite quite a smart way of looking at it. Now, so we've got a, a, a very glam sort of opening night planned for the seventh October at the Hollywood in Avondale. And you get some you get some key people coming along, don't you, for that night? Have you got a, a couple of politicians lined up for this? Oh, yeah, we normally get the likes of um, Auckland Mayor Phil Goff along. And um, I think this year we've got um, Carmel Cipollone, um, who's um, uh, put together a nice welcome for um, for everyone. But the, the, I think the main draw card is actually the filmmakers. We've got a lot of local filmmakers who'll be... Um, either having their world premiere or their international premiere. There's a few of the local short films that have screened at festivals overseas but haven't yet um, had a screening for New Zealanders. So it'll be nice to bring those films home. And we've also got some international filmmakers coming over from Switzerland and Israel um, to attend the world premiere of their film and to speak at some of our workshops and events. 
So for anyone who's interested in learning a bit more about short filmmaking, um, there's, there's loads of um, filmmaker talks and things that they can get involved with at the festival to um, find out more and learn from the mm. experts. Um, we, really, mm. we really try and make the most of all of those guests while they're here and um, um, yes. get them get them speaking to aspiring filmmakers in New Zealand and um, uh, telling us about all the mistakes they've made and the triumphs they've had so that we can um, learn from that. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's nothing like hearing it from the, um, from the, what's the, you know, what's that saying? From the horse's mouth. <laughs> you know, from hearing it from the person who's there at the coalface who's making these films and the challenges you face and, and what you're trying to achieve. So I, I suppose if people want to know the program, it's, it's very easy. They just, uh, I mean, I'm looking at it now. They just go online and uh, uh, show me Shorts Film Festival and, and they should be able to see everything that's happening in October. That's right. Everything's up at showmeshorts.co.nz and um, they should, people should be able to pick up printed program brochures in cinemas and libraries all across the country from next week. Um, and um, yeah, most of the sessions people can book for already and um, uh, otherwise a few more links will be added in the next week for how people can book tickets. But hopefully we'll see um, good numbers of people coming out to check it out. Mm. I think people are ready to get out and about and see some culture again. Oh, it's 100%, aren't we? We're just <laughs> desperate for it. I mean, I went to my first movie in ages recently and it was such a treat. It was <laughs> just great. And it, it is. It's nice to think that we can go to live shows and we can go and and soak out some culture. And like you say, we've, we're thirsty to know what's happening in the rest of the world. We want to see see that. So this is this is ideal. If you can't, you know, if you can't, you know, for various reasons, pop on a plane and get there, just go along and see some of these movies from all these interesting places. That's right. And yeah, hopefully we'll inspire some people to um, want to pick up a camera and make some films in the future as well. That, that's the thing. Just before you go, I want to ask you, there's the movie from Iran... It's called Split Ends, <laughs> but it's not Split Ends. Oh, yeah. and have, have you have you seen this? Yeah, yeah. So that film is actually a comedy about um, uh, a woman who is a, has been fined for not wearing a hijab, but she's bald, and a man who's been fined for not wearing a hijab because he has long hair and the, um, the cameras in Iran picked him up as being a woman with, with long hair. And the, the two of them are both arguing with a, with a traffic cop about um, trying to get out of their fines. And so it, yeah, it's it. kind of a silly <laughs> comedy. But um, it's, it's nothing to do with the, the New Zealand band. Um, but no, yeah, it, it is no. a good fun film. But it is related to hair. Mm, that's right. Yeah, oh. <laughs> Brilliant. Hey, well, that, that all sounds really interesting and, you know, and also it, it, it's good for the soul. It's uplifting. There's, there's nothing, there's, it's a win-win, isn't it, when you go and, and see a festival like this. And it's great fun if you can pick out a few because they're so diverse. So no, no one experience will be like the next, will it? That's right. And, um, you know, with short, a short film festival, you're coming to see a whole lot of short films. So um, there's bound to be something that you enjoy um, as part of that program. And there's good talking points. So if you want to take a, a friend along with you, you there'll be lots of interesting um, uh, sort of ideas for you to discuss if you want to yeah. have a cup of tea or a meal afterwards. You kind of want to do that after, I think, any sort of movie experience. I love sitting with a mate and just going, right, well, what did you think of that? And, you know, kind of breaking it down. It's part of the whole film experience, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Gina Delabaca, it's been fantastic speaking with you today, and I wish you all the very best for a wonderful Show Me Shorts Festival next month, hey? Thanks so much, Lee, and you have a great day. Thank you. You too. All right, so uh, that's what you need to do in October, people. Show me shorts, get along and support it wherever you are. Like I said, so many different areas are being catered for this year. Uh, too many to read out on the radio, but uh, a lot of different centres uh, it, it is coming to and it should be, uh, it should be a great time. So, yeah, get amongst it, people. Enjoy that freedom to, um, to mix and mingle once again.